welcome. Thank you for joining us today for this episode. I think we're episode number 11, or are we 12 now? Something like that. It might be 13. No, we're, gonna, yeah, we're skipping 13. Okay. We're going to skip 13. It's kind of like there's no 13th floor on some of these buildings. So we're yeah. excited to have you today for whatever episode we're on for Business Unusual. And we are excited to bring you an extra special guest today. I'm going to do a really quick intro. I'm Brendan Filbert, Managing Partner with SalesWorks. My job is to help you get in front of your next opportunity, whatever that may be. And I'm excited to um, collaborate with Chris Motley on putting this program together. I'm going to have him do a quick intro of who he is. So I'm Chris Motley, um, owner of Motley Creations, and we help small businesses with small budgets and big ideas. So what we do is find right size solutions to execute on their marketing strategy. So welcome, everybody. Yeah, good to have you. And I am actually going to introduce Katie because I probably brag on her maybe more than she brags on herself. So Katie's background is she has been a CMO within very large law firms and her background and expertise is unmatched in terms of helping people really craft the appropriate message that's going to engage on difficult topics. And when we were looking at what we were gonna be talking about this week, I'm just paying attention to what's going on in the world. And I thought, you know, we really need a voice of reason that can help us weigh in figure out what our path needs to be. And I know that there's so many people out there that are struggling with, should I even be marketing right now? So I reached out to Katie and she was gracious enough to accept our invitation today. And I am so excited to share her wisdom with you. And I know I'm gonna be learning along the way as we go. I do encourage you as we're diving in, like I said, I had a sneak peek at the slide deck. The information she's gonna be sharing with us today is absolutely amazing. So make sure you grab a notebook and pen. We will also be sharing the recording and slide deck later with you so that you have the opportunity to kind of dive in and go a little bit more in depth into the topics today because we don't want it to be just a, um, a presentation or a lecture. We want this to be very interactive. So Katie has requested that we chat messages or questions to her as we're going through and we just help her help us. So I'm excited to have you today. I'm turning it over to you and take it away. All right, and I don't know how to advance the slides, so perhaps you will do that. Let's let's fix that. Chris, can you turn things over to her? Do I need to do that? You need to do that because I don't okay. have control of the mouse. So why don't, we just, why don't I just say when we're ready to advance? Well, I can I can do that. I'm also really quickly. I have made you presenter. Nope. Well, you, you just, yeah, the screen went away. The screen went away. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to make her presenter, you were trying to give her a mouse and keyboard. Yeah. Oh, hey, first. Brendan, let's just, let's just keep it simple. And if you wouldn't mind, I can just tell you when to advance a slide and we'll just do it from your, your computer. Okay. I'm happy to do that. But let's cool. make sure that I'm actually showing the screen. Is the screen showing? Mm -mm. Nope. All right. Technology is my friend. Technology is my friend. <laughs> and I'm going to make sure that I can pull up, go to webinar. There's my control panel. And let us, I'm going to take this down and put up my screen. And nope. That's the wrong one. All right, technology is my friend. Sorry about this, everybody. Aha. It's part of the new normal. Here we go. Can can you see my screen now? Yeah. Let's put okay. it in. Put it in. I am gonna put it in slideshow, which yes. I thought I did. And I got to move this over. I'm trying to move my control panel. And here we go. Here we go. All right. You know, it's probably a bit of an exaggeration to say it's the end of the world, but but this week it sure felt like it. Um, so if you're feeling like this guy or feeling like the rest of us just kind of stressed and pressed, 
and sad at the same time. Um, the goal today is to talk about sales and marketing right now, um, how to do it with some more empathy, um, how to get your mind right that people do, do still need what you have to sell and, and do want to hear from you. It's just a slightly different tack um, and how to kind of channel what your, your clients are going through as well. So with that, let's next slide, please. Um, absolutely a, a business unusual environment. Um, seven out of 10 of us rate our set stress as significant. Um, of those who are employed, um, that rate continues with 70% saying work is a major stressor. And about half of parents report severe stress, um, whether that's from the new burden of homeschooling, the lack of childcare, um, you name it. So people are pulled in a thousand different directions. Um, I was working on a client project yesterday and um, it said the average worker has reports losing about an hour of productivity right now due to just distraction and anxiety um, with about a third of workers saying they're losing two hours. Um, right before this presentation, I just got my first out of office that said, I may be slow to respond to emails because I'm grieving this week. And I thought that was just unprecedented. Um, it is an absolute new reality um, and our old approaches just aren't gonna work. Um, they're gonna feel weird for us and they're not gonna land with our clients. Next one, please. So today uh, I'd like to talk through um, working on a new mission statement for ourselves, which is a bit of a touchy feely exercise, I acknowledge, um, but I think is really helpful in terms of getting your mind right to realizing that people do need to hear from you. And maybe it's just a different way of thinking about it and a different way of expressing it. Uh, we'll talk about how to integrate your marketing with your sales to make your sales process a little bit easier and look at some best practices for building your brand um, with, with trust, empathy, and respect. Next slide. So first, let's talk about that mission statement, uh, your new normal. Um, and I think a good meditation here is, you know, you are not paid to blank. You're not paid to sell paper clips. You're not paid to do legal marketing. Um, you're paid to solve problems. So it's it's time to make sure our mindset reflects we're problem solving. We're not pushing products. We're not pushing services. We're, we're solving problems. Um, so this exercise is designed to help you channel what those problems are. Next slide. Uh, really, we're looking for three things right now. Empathy, um, what your clients are going through. Relevance, making sure that it is relevant to the new normal. And focusing on being helpful. Next one. Um, I hate presentations where the speaker just reads. Um, I know this is a lot of, of text. Um, as Brendan said, these slides will be available, so I'll just kind of blow through these right now. Uh, but then I will walk you through. Um, I actually did this exercise for one part of our business, and so I'll share my homework there. But really just meditating, who is your target customer? Um, really think that through. Um, I know that you've been working with Brendan, and so you've been doing this already. What do you do for them? But without my help, what will happen to them? Why is this bad? And here, you know, really go deep. Um, what does the lack of your engagement mean for them holistically? What does it mean for their home life, for their future, for their physical health, for their relationships? Just keep peeling that onion. Um, on the flip side, what happens with your help? And how does this make their lives better? And do the same thing, go deep. Um, think about every aspect of their lives. This working with you could possibly improve. And then finally, the big, big question right now, why does this still matter? No matter what is going on in the world, why is this still relevant? Um, so before we advance, I'll just kind of share what, what I've been going through as a business owner. Um, we have a, a product. Um, we're a marketing agency, so most of our work is in, in services. But we have a product that's a business development training program for women attorneys. Um, a lot of it is, you know, when the economy was booming, we were wanting to help create more women rainmakers. That's something I'm really passionate about. Well, now, you know, we're seeing headline after headline of law firms furloughing staff, layoffs, um, people just really unsure what's going to happen to the legal industry when courts are closed. 
Um, it's it's really an industry in a lot of turmoil. And so I thought, oh, this may be just in really bad taste to be promoting a sales training program for women lawyers right now. We should probably put this on ice. And then I did this exercise and, and let's walk this through together. So Brendan, next slide. Okay, so who is my target customer? I help women in corporate law firms. All right. Um, what do I do for them? And and here, when you do this exercise, don't think about, you know, I help them learn how to make better bios. Don't think about tactics, think about the big picture. So what do I do for them? I help them stop being cogs and start bringing in business. I help them do more of the work they want to do and get paid what they're worth. So think, you know, really paint with a big paintbrush here. Without my help, what will happen to them? This is, you know, really go into the doomsdays here. Um, without our help, they will rely on others to send them projects. They will toil on work they don't love doing. They may struggle to meet deadlines or travel demands outside their control. And then here, you know, just horror stories here. Um, get marginalized in anonymity within a big firm, lose out on partnerships or bonuses, never get paid what they're worth. Um, pretty, pretty dire. Why is this bad? And when you do this exercise, I encourage you to use this bold face phrase here. This makes their life a living hell because. So for us, these women without control, without a business development plan, without a book of business, this makes their life a living hell because. They lose sleep, they lose confidence, they feel guilty, they lose touch with their friends and family, they get overwhelmed, they burn out, and in short, they're pretty miserable. But with my help, um, these people will start building their own book of business, they will have control over their lives, they'll do work they love, they'll do it on their own terms, and they'll get paid more. How does this make their lives better? And use this phrase again too when you're doing this exercise on your own. We'll provide the slides so you can see it. This benefits everything in their lives because, um, and for us, it was, you know, if you have a book of business, if you have control over your destiny within your firm, if you're confident with your place within your firm, you can have more control over your life. You can show up as a partner, as a parent, you can feel healthier physically, emotionally, you'll stop worrying about money. Next slide. And the big question, why does this still matter? And here's that another helpful bold bold face phrase. Now more than ever, people need to feel secure in their livelihoods. And women who, let's face it, are shouldering a lot of the burden of online schooling, childcare, and other emotional labor, they need the authority to command flexibility and balance in their careers. So that, you know, doing this exercise really took me from a, I don't want to be pushing this product to oh, well, this is a way I could help people solve a problem. Next slide. And this, before I before I advance the slide, I will tell you that um, this is actually an exercise and one similar to this is one that I've had a number of my clients going through right now. The other Good. pieces to this that I'm discovering is this information when you collaborate with your clients and gather this insight it can actually reveal where you may need to be pivoting in order to even provide more value to them right now with everything that's going on. So this it, it's so important to just really stay tight with your clients during all of this. I know, you know, that one of the biggest challenges is we kind of get a little scared and we start thinking about, um, well, I know they've got a lot on their plate. Are they going to want to talk to me? And is this, is, is timing bad for me to even be having conversations with them? Do they have too much on their plate? And, um, you know, I'm finding that the more I do engage them in conversation, the more I've been able to help and truly serve them where and how they needed it. And in some cases, it hasn't had anything to do with what I'm directly doing, but it's just helped me be a better human to know what their challenges and gaps are and help provide them resources and solutions. So I just wanted to add that. And Brendan, that's such a great point. You know, even if you you do the homework, you do this exercise and you adjust um, your mindset from product to problem solving, um, if you don't then change your messaging, change how you talk about it, uh, it's, it's gonna land like a clunk. 
um, if, if I took the same business development for women lawyers campaign that we are using in boom times with the same phrasing, you know, be a rainmaker, um, when things are just crashing down, it would seem so tone deaf and awful. Um, so the, the pivot is still important, even if you, once you do the homework to decide you are still relevant, you are still important, um, you still have to read the room. Um, so really here um, on this slide, you know, what's the difference? Back, you know, in, in boom times when we could have more of a product mindset, I had business development training for women lawyers, straightforward. Now it's a it's a problem mindset mindset. It's help for women lawyers who need more income stability, lower stress, and the ability to balance work with new and changing home obligations. Um, it's it's very different way of thinking about the world. It truly is. And it, it's one that I think the more we talk about this as far as being in tune with solution sales and recognizing that we are truly solving solving issues and challenges and making an impact. And we get that intellectually, but I think, you know, what you're sharing with us today is how you can actually engage that with who you are and with your true mission and purpose and what motivates you to do what you do. So that's that's just, it, it's a critical message that you're sharing. And just ultimately, you know, right now, no one wants to be sold, but we could all use some help. Um, so how can you help? It comes down to that. Uh, next slide, please. Let's talk about sales and marketing or the chicken and the egg. Um, how do they work together? What do they do? What are they? Next, okay. Um, sales and marketing, what's the difference? Um, you know, sales, really when we talk about sales, it's that one-to-one -one communication of I'm trying to engage with Brendan. I'm trying to engage with Chris, not the marketplaces in general. I want to make a difference for that one person. With marketing, it's one to many. I'm blasting out my message to a relevant audience, but it's a whole lot of Brendan's. It's a whole lot of Chris's. Sales, our goal is relationships and marketing, our goal is reputation. And in sales, it may be about micro trends, micro priorities. Um, I believe that the fabulous Liz Megley is on this call. Um, she specializes in proposals and is the, the best in the biz. Um, Liz taught me with every proposal to have a number of of discriminators, of arguments that I could make, of why I'm the best fit in this situation that no one else can claim. But that's very situational based. Um, whereas in marketing, we're looking at macro, um, you know, looking at macro trends, making a lot of generalities ab about things and not looking at those specifics. Um, and in different times, I sometimes refer to these as the air war of marketing, you know, blasting out those messages and sales is the ground war. You're taking the ground. Um, next slide, please. So what's the point? Why, why do we do sales and marketing? Um, Brandon had a humdinger of a statistic and a communication maybe about a month ago. Uh, you know, it used to be kind of this adage that took about six to nine touches of interactions um, to get people to go from merely knowing about your product or service to buying it. That still felt like a lot. Well, now when we're all fried and distracted and you know, kind of that high stress, low trust, research is showing it can take up to 22 interactions right now uh, to move people along that arc. So what does that mean? If you're only using sales tactics and you're just calling people all the time, you had better be really, really cool. <laughs> You'd better be someone I really want to spend time with. Um, but really, 22 sales calls is exhausting for everyone involved. And so marketing gives you an opportunity to use strategic communications tools to stay in touch with those people, to move them along, um, but without emotionally draining either of you. Uh, next one, please. So, um, this is absolutely some inside baseball from from my people. Oh, so cool! <laughs> but you know, when we think how to get to 22, um, as we said, you could call someone 22 times, which you know may result in a restraining order. <laughs> or you could look at okay, maybe I'm going to call them four times, but in between, I'm going to show them our credibility 
by using some of these these marketing communication tools. So on the left in the orange or the yellow circle, we have paid media. Fancy word for advertising. Um, so that's, you know, thinking about I'm trying to sell something to Chris and let's say Chris sells trucks. Um, I know that he reads, you know, truck dealer monthly. So one of my touches could be I'm going to have a great advertising campaign in Truck Buyer Monthly. Earned media. Um, this refers to media that you have to earn, um, whether that's a speaking engagement or an article placement. So again, in, in happier days, it may be that I'm trying to get Chris to buy something. I'm going to make sure I'm speaking at the, the Truck Buyers Convention. Um, but right now, it could be I'm going to place articles. Um, shared media. Shared media is social media, social you know, media that we share. Um, so that's also making sure that we're spreading great messages on Facebook, on Twitter. We have a neat video on YouTube um, that explains, you know, what we do, why we do it. Um, and then owned media, finally, that's content you create. Um, so that could be an e-newsletter, um, that could be an e-book, case studies, podcasts. So that really when you start thinking about those, those 22 interactions, maybe that's four calls. But a lot between those four calls, then it's people are seeing articles, people are seeing, you know, you're giving a speech, you have an article in a trade press, um, you share some case studies of people who have implemented your product. So they're, they're tools that you can use over and over again, but they also kind of work as signposts for people along that journey. Uh, Brendan, um, can you talk to everyone a little bit more about those notorious 22 touches nowadays and and how in your experience some of the, the Marcom tools have helped? Well, what I'm discovering is that you're typically gonna end up with a few touches that take place before you ever even have conversations with a buyer. And you know, when you think about it, one of the other stats that was just so kind of earth shaking was the fact that two thirds of the buyer journey has taken place for the time you ever actually engage in a conversation with your prospect. So where the Marcom connection comes in is if you even want to participate in that initial two thirds of the buyer journey and not have people come to you with decisions already made that have no influence from you. If you're not participating in the marketing up to that point, you get completely left out of the initial stages to influence that buyer. And it's one of those cases of it, it used to be a it was optional if you wanted to participate in creating content and and having an active marketing effort to be successful in sales. Now it's there. The, the numbers are just mind blowing. And I'm not, you know, I laughingly talk about how 76 percent of statistics are made up on the spot. And, um, you know, it's it just goes to show you, though, that there are so many really incredibly validated studies that show that people that are top earners in business development are really good marketers and the people that are average in sales refuse to market so that is probably the biggest um you know the biggest signpost there that says you really need to be doing this it's not it's not optional this is it's must do and that's part of the reason why we've created this series is to really help people understand exactly how it all fits in because it truly is a collaborative effort. It's not a, you do this and then that it is a, while you're doing this, you also do that. Absolutely. Um, well, I think, you know, something you, you mentioned that, that people had already kind of started the journey on their own for a lot of people that's gonna be sitting at their desk and, and Googling the topic, right? Seeing who comes up. This strange little diagram here is designed to be a Venn diagram because these overlap, but in the very middle, um, I'm pointing at it pointlessly, <laughs> in the middle, um, it's authority. And, and that's because if you use all of these strategically, it will dramatically increase your chance of being on that front page of Google. Um, Google likes social media. Uh, Google likes people who use YouTube because they own it. Um, so shared media is important. Owned media is important because Google has something called the freshness factor, where the more times you are updating your own website, you get good points for that. So that helps boost your Google credibility. 
paid media Google loves because you are getting links back to your website from an organization that has higher credibility than you do. Um, all of us may be incredibly credible in our own right, but here in this community, the Kansas City Star would have higher credibility with Google than any of us. So if you have um, an ad campaign and sponsored content or earned media with the star and you're getting a reference back to your own website, that's going to increase your, your authority as well. So it's kind of a brave new world that we're designing products both for human consumption and for robot consumption. Um, but a really smart marketing communication strategy will take both of those audiences into effect because just as Brendan said, people are starting that journey independently. And so if they're if they're relying on a search engine, Googling it to to inform them, um, you got to play the game. All right, next slide. So I have a, a Brendan quote here at the top that I've always loved, um, that no one likes to have their bases touched. You know, going back to that, who wants to be called 22 times? But we've all dealt with that person. We've all dealt with that vendor who tries 22 times um, using some pesky old school tactics to get off. And it's just the worst. Um, let's not be those people. Um, I try to, you know, mind my inbox rule, which is that every touch with a prospect should add value. And the way you can do that when you're, you know, the way you do that by, you know, what you're doing is is touching bases, right? But you couch it as something that's adding value. So every touch should add value. It should be an introduction to a qualified referral. And and certainly if if you all know Brendan, I don't need to go on about qualified referrals. Um, but introducing them to someone who can be helpful to them. An invitation um, to either something, you know, we have a webinar going on on this, or did you hear about this event, or, you know, maybe even something fun, um, or an insight. And, and this is where, you know, go back to those marketing communications tools on the last slide. I really thought this, you know, case study, this is about a, a company just like yours, may be helpful. Um, here's an article you may enjoy. Um, so that you're not just saying, you know, hey, have you thought any more about buying from me? Um, but you're really adding value and, and helping make their lives easier. Um, next slide. So with all of that, how do we actually do it? And, and how do you market now without being a, a creep? Go for it, Brendan. So first, um, just some ground rules. Mind your mission statement. Um, go back, think about your your folks and and you know that that living hell they may have, but also how you can help. So everything you do right now should be couched with empathy, relevance, and help. And then mind your inbox. Uh, possibly one of my favorite um, trends or jargon, made up words to come out of all this right now is the the spam demic. And I think we've all seen that too. Um, in my world with law firms, it's you know one development and I get probably 20 identical client alerts from 20 different law firms. Don't be part of this pandemic. Um, add value with introductions, invitations, and insight. Uh, of course, I hope it goes without saying, introductions, invitations, and insight are not one size fits all. And I think you know the pandemic is what's happening because businesses are thinking instead of what does Brendan need to hear? Um, they're saying, well, everybody needs to hear this. And when everybody does that, we all get 20 emails that are exactly the same. And they're saying okay. instead of what do I, what do they need to hear? It's what do I need to say? And people right. are very worried about that right now is what do I need to say and getting my opinion out there. And that's not what is important. Um, one of my favorite clients um, just said early on, we're not doing client alerts, we're not sending them out. Um, one reason was everything is changing so quickly. Um, they didn't want to have a bunch of things in writing that people might rely on that would then be inaccurate, which was smart. Um, but also that one size fits all solutions right now are, are not a thing. Um, and so instead they had their attorneys all, you know, go old school and call people. Um, and they've gotten tremendous results from that. Okay, next one. So one of my just favorite folks to follow in the marketing space is a gentleman named named James Kane, who studies loyalty. Um, and there he talks about the elements of trust and what makes you trust someone and what can make you lose trust in someone. 
And he talks about the four elements of trust, the four C's that I think are so important to think about as we're designing marketing campaigns and just our, our own personal communications as well. Competence, that's kind of a, you know, the low bar, but can you actually do the job? Do your communications show that you're a safe choice? This is where it's really good to get into showing versus telling. And instead of saying, we're the best at this, you know, that's get into things that, that make that case for you. We've been in business this long. We've won this, these many awards. We have these testimonials from our clients. Again, we're in a high stress, low trust environment. Give people reasons to show that you're reliable. You're gonna be there for them. You're not, they're not taking a big risk on you. Uh, you're a very safe choice. Character. Do your communications show empathy, awareness? Um, are you a good person? Um, you, know, you can't really fake it. Uh, but you know, is your organization supporting charities? Are you socially aware? Um, these are things that are, that are an important characteristic of important component of trust. Consistency. Um, are you reliable? Do you perform the same kind of quality day in day out? Um, you know, Brendan, right now, when I went through her training, so much of it is follow up um, that people will make a couple of outreach attempts and then drop the ball. Uh, it's more important, very, very important right now, now more than ever, I was trying to avoid saying, but, but needs to be said, that you're consistent, um, that you're not going to be a flash in the pan, that you're here for them in the long run. And then capacity. Capacity was always a fascinating element when I talked to James Kane about trust, because Someone can think that you're a great solution and you're a great person and you know your work product is great, but if they worry you don't have time for them or you don't have capacity for them, they may lose trust and go somewhere else. And so I've always thought about that when I'm talking to my clients, you know, not to say, oh God, we're so busy right now, or to be canceling meetings because I have this other client thing coming up because people need to feel, they want to work with a winner, they want to work with someone who's established, but they also want to make sure you have time and you have room for them, that you can take care of them. Um, so something to make sure, I think the most meaningful ways to convey that is, is interpersonally, um, but also you know, in your marketing communications, we're here for you, we stand ready to serve you, having some reassuring messages that you have room for these folks. Um, they're not gonna be pushed aside. Um, you're not gonna drop them for the next cool prospect that comes along. Um, it's a really important building block of trust. Um, next slide, please. Before I move forward, when we're getting a couple of comments as we go through this. Great. On exactly how is this demonstrated and where, where can people shoot themselves in the foot because they don't realize that they're violating the elements of trust. And one of these things, and it was pointed out by one of our participants is, when you convey that you were just so busy and that you don't have time or you push people off, that's conveying that lack of capacity that says, I really don't have room for you. So Absolutely. it is so or, you know, critically important. I think also, you know, avoiding the, as business owners, thinking about avoiding the, the bait and switch, uh, that maybe those of us who own the business um, have the most credentials, have the most experience, if we're out there making the sale, making sure that either in the proposal, if we're not going to be doing the work ourselves, that in the proposal we say that and we introduce our team, we give them a chance to meet the people who will be doing the work, or we have a very purposeful introduction of them at the beginning because people need to feel like what they bought is what they're getting. Um, and if someone buys me thinking I'm going to be doing all their work and then I say, Oh, it's so great to have you. Thank you for signing your contract. You'll never see me again. Here's so and so. Um, violates trust too. Um, so I think you know, just being very, very transparent, um, making room for them. But but if you have to do that by changing your staffing, um, tell them. People understand that. People understand. You know, you're not always an army of one. Um, but be very forthright from the from the get go. Well, and very collaborative in terms of. Um... I, you know, we work with so many different professionals that are in business development almost exclusively. So the majority of their effort is done at the front end of the funnel in terms of the, how that relationship is managed. And then they do get turned over. But then, in, unfortunately, so many of them disappear after 
the sale is made. And in order to have that relationship and that trust, because while the client may be doing business with the firm or with the company or with the organization, relationships are formed with people. And anything that you do throughout the marketing or you know that initial funnel that appears disingenuous later on is not good. And that's why it's so important to even have those touch points throughout the relationship. When you do bring in a new client, it's having fixed signposts as Kate as, as Katie's sharing about different points where you come back in to have that conversation that says, how is the project going from your perspective? I've been having regular conversations with the team that's working on your account, but I just want to make sure that everything is still working as you were expecting. And then also this gives you the opportunity to discover if there are more areas that you can add even more value through perhaps introductions or referrals or other resources or even more work that you can do. So. And, you know, if there is a problem, you find out about it first, which Absolutely. is tremendous. Um, just because we ignore problems doesn't mean they go away. No, they just get worse. Okay. <laughs> Um, so some best practices. Um, so let's look at some companies that are doing it right and some that are not. Um, first of all, right now, don't be afraid to acknowledge the issues. Um, it's a weird world that we're living in. And I think the the brands that act like everything's honky dory, um, there's already some backlash against them. Um, this was a, a nice one I thought from Netflix that just said to be silent is complicit. Black Lives Matter. Um, you'll notice here, you know, Netflix didn't announce a big new initiative or aren't really clear on what exactly they're going to do. Um, they're probably still thinking about it, but they just owned it. Um, we have a duty to speak up, period. Um, you know, and then they have 1.08 million parts. Um, so they're, they're doing it right. Um, next one. On the other side, if you are going to make a statement like that, don't overlook your own issues. Um, this was Nike. Um, Nike had a new ad that said, don't do it, talking about uh, you know, racial racial inequities. And people were quick to notice that Nike has no people of color on their executive team. Um, so um, when you do speak up, you know that may be a good time to engage a communications professional, um, make sure that it's something that is earnest and heartfelt, but not something that could be used against you. Um, especially in the Midwest, unfortunately, some of us are not as diverse as we would like to be. Um, we can still feel very genuine and want to be agents of change and want to help and be invested in helping, but I think it's important to be sensitive um, about our own composition before, like Nike, you go all in on something that is used against you. Next. You know, do incorporate the new normal appropriately. And in some ways, it's okay to do this with a bit of a laugh. Um, I love this campaign from Dove. Um, you know, we're all kind of cutting our own bangs or doing our own hair color or shaving our own heads. Um, and, and Dove had a really cute campaign um, where people could send in video or photos of, of them doing it their own way. Um, just supporting all new hairstyles, I think, is, is really warm and loving. Um, this was kind of their fun campaign. Uh, they also had one with um, with doctors and nurses um, with the PPE, and some of them you could see, you know, the, the marks in their skin from having worn the um, the masks for so long. And, and I think the message was something, you know, like heroism is beautiful. Um, so they had two campaigns. They had one that was a little light, this one of this fabulous lady cutting her bangs, and then one of of saluting the first responders. Um, there are ways to do that very elegantly and genuine, and, and Dove is a beauty beauty product, so it, it makes sense. Um, but on the next one, we'll see one that landed with a clunk. Don't just do a pandemic rebrand. You know, McDonald's has nothing to do with this space, and in McDonald's in Brazil, broke apart their arches. This was a, a rendering, it was for a campaign, um, but to show social distancing, which was just kind of too cute. Um, I 
you know, took the liberty of blurring it here, but but someone wrote, you know, F off McDonald's. So <laughs> um, don't force it. If, if there's something about your product or service that, you know, does kind of feed or, or help the narrative, great. Uh, but don't feel like you have to do it either here with, with the pandemic rebrand. Uh, next slide. Do use online and social tools to connect. Um, Spin Sucks is a blog um, and a community that's aimed at people like me that own marketing and communications agencies. But this is a tool that I think could be everyone's secret weapon. And um, perhaps if you get nothing else from this talk, you do this. Um, Spin Sucks started doing a just Q&A with people from the community and they're calling it My Hot Mess, which is funny, um, but how agency owners are, are dealing with the pandemic. Um, you know, you're working from home, you're away from your people, maybe there are kids around. Um, but the brilliant thing about this, one, it's, it's interesting to read these stories, but the brilliant thing about this is it gives you a reason to call those people to say, hey, Chris Brogan, we were wondering how you were doing. We would love to feature you on our blog and to interview you for our blog and to write it up. You know, would you be willing to be one of our, our subjects for my hot mess? Well, all of us would be flattered to do it. Um, I did something similar with, with Ad Pulp a little bit a, a few weeks ago. But the cool thing about that, it gives you a great reason to call that person. It gives you a reason to call that person that's really warm and interesting and they're flattered. And then, Finally, they're probably going to promote it across all of their social channels. So you get free press. Um, you get the benefit of their networks learning about it. Um, everybody wins here. Um, so it's it's a communications tool. I just think we don't do enough of. People love Q and A. They're easy to read. They're easy to write, um, and you get to connect with someone that you want to connect to. So do that. Um, next one. Use online and social. Um, use it smart, but do not automate anything. Everything is changing. Everything is changing so fast. Um, we saw that with the protests this week, that brands who continue to just spit out, you know, stuff they'd planned three weeks ago, landed, uh, yeah, like a lead balloon. This is a, a horrible example of KFC right before the coronavirus started a finger licking good campaign. Um, with, you know, when we were all afraid to touch or anything, all of a sudden you have finger licking good ads. No, don't do it. Do not automate anything right now. There are some social media tools that allow you to schedule posts. And in normal times, those can be really helpful so that you don't just get distracted or other work gets in the way and you forget to do it. But right now, do not automate anything. Okay. And finally, do the, the right, right thing. Um, and again, this is, it's a space where I feel like I probably gave you some contradictory messages of acknowledge it, but don't acknowledge it. Um, it it's hard to do well. Um, and it's important that what you do is very relevant. Here are two that I think are, are very relevant. They're true to the brand. Um, we have Teo Kali, which, which if you're familiar with it, is a wonderful Mexican restaurant on Hospital Hill. They are located stone's throw from Truman Med and from Children's Mercy. Um, like many restaurants, they took their um, operations online and were basically working delivery and carry out. Um, but on that platform, they started buy a meal for a first responder where, you know, when I bought my enchiladas, I could spend another $8.50 and, and donate a meal. And at the end of the day, every day, they were taking all the meals that had been donated to their neighbors, to Children's Mercy or to Truman Med. Um, they're in the neighborhood. It was something people could do easily. Um, it just made a lot of sense. It was just a, a nice, elegant extension of their existing brand. Bud Light at the same time, um, Bud Light is everywhere. Um, Bud Light has a lot more marketing muscle than, than many local restaurants. And so for its right, right thing, it started an open for takeout, um, just to, to use the power of its website to help people find restaurants. You know, not completely, altruistic. I'm sure Bud Light wants to sell some beer too. Um, but using its power to help others in a way that is is genuine and real. If, if Bud Light said, you know, hey, we've made a million dollar donation to such and such, it may not ring as true. Uh, they're trying to help in a way that is very natural. Um, you know, something for, for my agency. So we specialize in marketing communications for law firms. 
um, we talked a lot about what's what's our response going to be, uh, because we we do want to respond, but in a way that is natural for our brand. And talking through it, it was okay. Uh, we were good lawyers. We want to support a legal organization that is working to, you know, improve access to justice. And also because we work in public relations, we are have been very bothered by the reports of the media under attack. You know, here um, down by the plaza, a news van was burned and people were throwing rocks at journalists. Journalists are one of our client groups too. We pitch them stories about our our clients all the time. And so we ended up making two contributions. One was to um, the Equal Justice Initiative and one was to the Committee to Protect Journalists, things that were true to our agency. Um, didn't wanna do a knee jerk donation, wanted to make it something that was meaningful, relevant and helpful to our client bases. Okay, well, next well, slide. Well, yep. before, we, before we dive into the next one, what I would love to do, we actually had someone that chatted a question that Great. I would love to bring her in to the conversation if you're up for it she wanted to do a little bit of brainstorming on her messaging and oh. thought that it would be a phenomenal example of what we're talking about liz do you want to share what your question was with the group and let's get katie's insight and expertise yeah i do thank you guys so much um so i'm one of those people who as a writer and communicator, I overthink all of my messages and my reaction is just to not do anything on social media, which is obviously not um, a great tactic for um, getting those 22 touches and showing that we're empathetic standing um, with people in this situation. And so I've been like brainstorming and jotting down ideas, but I'm just afraid to act. And so I posted a question, just kind of like a draft message that I would like to put on LinkedIn. Um, as like an infographic for my brand. And I, so I just wanted to see um, Katie, Brendan, and Chris, if you guys thought this sounded appropriate or tone deaf, deaf, tone deaf or just too like me centric. So this is kind of the draft I have and I'm really proud of this is um, that more than half of our clients are diverse small businesses. We're proud to serve them and help be their voice in the procurement process and your success and well being is our priority. I think that's great. Um, I almost wonder, you know, we have, we are a WBE, and so that's, that's important to us too. But I think we're going to see a lot of big corporations looking at diversifying their supplier base. And I almost wonder if you could acknowledge that, you know, something like, you know, if your organization is looking to diversify its or you know we applaud organizations who will look to diversify their supplier base if you need help in this let me know something like that obviously we need to wordsmith it but i wonder if there's a way to I, open that up to, I'm like a bit of a call to action at the end yeah i'd add like that call to action awesome thank you yeah, and you know, the biggest thing I think when you're putting together a message like that is, is look at how often you're referencing me, you know, anything that uses the I, me, we, I always try to do a me, me counter. And if you're leading with we are proud, you're immediately talking about yourself instead of talking about maybe it's a leading with a statistic that talks about how many small businesses are looking for more diverse avenues and the fact that corporations are struggling with not having enough diverse options and that there needs to be a collaboration between the two and start a conversation rather than you know i'm always thinking on the sales side <laughs> and, and um, katie and i have had the conversation you know sales is one-to-one -one. I'm always looking for an opportunity to have that call to action that does encourage them to reach out, ask me questions, engage, and um, do something, just not read it. So that's my two cents. I imagine Chris also has two cents. He's been awfully quiet today, hasn't he? Well, I, I do have uh, a couple of thoughts. I'm just um, really enjoying hearing Katie present though. So. Um, 
part of the thing that I we've been talking about in Business Unusual for the longest time is um, you know the whole check-in kind of thing and the information that you put out out and, and it needs to go from me focus to you focus right and that going to somebody and going just checking in is basically are you ready to buy from me right so in this instance like this this phrase and stuff is is still very me focused and it, I think um, we need to we need to take an effort we need to take time to go out and find you know articles and documents and things like that to to share with people right I need to, uh, for me I have to put that on my calendar because I'm busy 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 right and um, in that case you know I, I keep a list of links and uh, I remember conversations I've had with people and send them out to them so it, Maybe something about this would be um, something that actually helps their well-being, right? Something that was some information that could help them move forward in the process or whatever. So, I, I, but I'm a firm believer of you know you don't tell people you're great, you show them, right? And so that's that's just what I thought about it. And that's that's also an area that that can immediately tell you, Liz. That that's um, if you're not finding a lot of resources that are talking about diversity for corporations and big companies and how they can improve their supplier diversity. Maybe that's something that you need to create content on and share. And flip side of it is helping small business recognize that um, that is an avenue that is open and receptive and probably quite fertile territory if they would choose to go that direction. So just remember that there's two audiences there and shape the messaging according to which audience you're trying to resonate. But, you know, the whole me, me thing is um, I'm always, and I, there, at one point in time, and this was years and years ago, there was an app that was called the me, me counter that you could actually put your, and there's, if it's not still around, that would be something that would be really helpful for content creators, but you could put your, um, your piece into it, cut and paste it. And it would give you a reference number based on how many times you talked about yourself versus how often you were talking to your audience. And I do that just as a course of when I'm reading through this. I'm I'm always looking for that ratio of I want to be talking about them and you much more than I'm talking about me. So that's two cents worth. But great question. Thanks for coming out to play, Liz. Yeah, thank um, you guys so much for your input. Liz, I think, you know, maybe I may be devil's advocate here, but I, I like that you are owning it and using the we language because you're the owner of the business and it, it's a little bit different time and you, you, you're you kind of like you're taking a stand and saying we're we are here to do this and there's some the accountability that comes with that. Um, and so maybe it's something just, you know, like, $78 billion is allocated every year in the corporate procurement process. You know, we're on a mission to make sure more of that money gets to diverse suppliers and we're here to help. I mean, something simple like that. I love that. That's um, awesome. Yeah. And, and Brendan, you know, 98% of the time, I would agree with you on, you know, checking for the, the wee wee, as I, I heard someone say, but, um, but if you think about the purpose of this particular communication, it really is to take a stand and it may be appropriate to just own it. You know, no one no one likes those statements that like, you know, mistakes were made. Like, you know, I made a mistake is, is more powerful. Um, Thank you guys okay, so much. So, um, big finish. Don't sell right now. Um, and, and if you've been working with Brendan for the past 10 to 12 weeks, um, you probably aren't. Um, the fact that you um, are emotionally intelligent enough to, to join in and, and want to improve on a series like this already gives me pretty good confidence you're not a cheesy salesperson. Um, so don't sell, but instead look for ways to be a connector, tell a story. Um, again, I love those people who are doing the Q&A interviews because you're, you're telling a human story. Um, share quick tips. This was something I worked on with a client where we're we're working on an ebook. And I said, you know, right now we're all stressed and pressed. Some of us are losing one to two hours a day of productivity. Manage expectations on the front end. And so if it's an ebook, 
instead of saying, you know, here's everything you need to know about corporate securities law. Well, heck, if I download that, is it going to hijack my whole day? Instead, we thought, you know, 10 things you need to know about corporate securities law. Like, think about your communications like that right now in terms of make it easy and level with people at the beginning. This is the kind of time investment that you're going to have to put into this, you know, corporate securities law guide. So quick tips right now, I think, are really helpful. Um, make an introduction to someone who can help them and, and give a tool. Um, make their lives better, easier, safer. Uh, we, all, we all need that right now. Um, that is it. Uh, if you want some specific tips on, on execution of marketing, contact me. Um, my email is here. Um, we put together a, a series on how to market without being a creep. We cover things from graphic design to media relations to social media and, and some really tactical advice in there. Um, otherwise, Brandon and Chris, take it away. And I also encourage you to reach out and connect with Katie on LinkedIn. She is really a lot of fun to follow and engage with. And I enjoy also knowing her via Facebook. Um, it is Catherine Holler Barnard, B-A-R-N-A-R-D. And you can find her on LinkedIn. And um, she's just, she's an amazing resource to have. And I think Chris may actually, are you sharing, um, are you sharing her profile link? Could you snag that real quick for us and share sure. it in chat so that folks have the opportunity to go back in and have a conversation with her? All right. And then... Let's just real quick, we want to hop back on and see if we have any questions based on our conversation that we've had so far today. Katie's a phenomenal resource. And thank you. I want to give such a huge thank you for taking time with us today and giving us great insight and information to share. So My pleasure. thanks for having me and uh, thanks for the no one likes to have their bases touched creed that, that I live by. You know, it's it's been fun. You've been a fantastic mentor, particularly in our collaborations with the law firms that we've worked with. And, you know, it's just always interesting to make sure that, and the other thing that I want people to really understand, much like the advice that we gave Liz, we're coming at this from a different perspective. So everything that I'm doing is that one-to-one -one conversation. And that tends to be what drives my thinking. And Katie's talking about the one to many. What you have to, all of us do is we have to find that balance of where are we connecting? How are we communicating? Does the message need to be one to one? Do we need to focus on that one to many? And make sure that we are gaining help from somebody else just giving you that listening ear. And I am just, I've, I've been honored to work with Katie on a few joint projects and she's done a phenomenal job for many of the firms and professionals that I know she's worked with. Um, and I just encourage you to reach out and connect and build a relationship with her. Thank you very much. All right, let's see if we have any questions. Okay, so Chris shared the email address and then also the LinkedIn profile in chat. So I encourage you to reach out, build a relationship. She's a great person to know. I've been honored counter as a friend and a referral partner for several years now. Thanks to Betsy Allgaier for making that connection. Gosh, forever and a day ago. Yeah. I think it was. Okay. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time today, everyone. We really appreciate you taking your time out on a Friday. I have many of my um, clients are thinking that people are webinared out and I recognize that you may be. I do also recognize that we have to find what's working right now. And the only way that you're gonna know what's working is to have a sounding board and just that collaborative effort going on with other professionals that are out there building their businesses to hear what's resonating and connecting with audiences. And that's what we're here for every week. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you tune in on next Friday's Business Unusual. We're gonna be talking about smart strategies to get to revenue fast based on businesses are opening back up. Some of the restrictions are lifting. We're gonna be talking about how to navigate that. And then the following week, we're actually gonna be talking about 
risk management strategy. So we've got some more special speakers lined up. So you are going to want to make sure that you stay tuned and you join us for our next conversations that we have in the coming weeks. We are here to support professionals that are in transition, that are in a pivot mode, evaluating where they're going, or businesses that are looking for their next client or new markets to pursue. Chris, is there anything you want to add to our conversation as we wrap sure. up? Sure. Sure. Um, Katie, thank you so much. It was a very poignant, very important information. And, and kind of what I'd like to add to it is that, um, you know, be sincere, right? You can't fake, you know, Nike seemed a little insincere, right? Mm -hmm. Don't try to be someone you're not, right? And, and um, if you're struggling with this concept and, and how to make your message, that's that's what people like Katie and I do, right? So you can hire a fractional CMO or whatever, right? You don't have to hire a whole agency and, and fulfillment and everything. So you can get, we could, people like us and other companies can help you get your message um, correct, right? So thanks again, Katie. Um, outstanding job. I appreciate you taking the time. My have pleasure. A Thank you. Very much. I want to encourage you to be safe, have a great day, and I wish you all good selling. As oh, remember, remember to get what you want. Oh, you got to help okay. others get what they want. Yay. Now good selling. Okay, take care. Thanks.